Hi Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus, this is Dane, and I am going to be doing your June 2021 full moon reading for you. Now I ask if this reading resonates with you, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you're interested in any of the cards that I'm using, they will all be listed and linked in the description box below. Now before we begin this reading, let us clear the energy space, raising our own energy vibration and releasing any negativity. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. Releasing all negativity from the body like storm clouds. Letting yourself feel calm, centered, and at peace as we enter into this safe and loving space. Let's let the bowl sing as we see what the tarot has to say. How will Sagittarius be affected by the June 2021 full moon? How will Sagittarius be affected by the June 2021 full moon? Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Ooh, that's intense. How will Sagittarius be affected by the June 2021 full moon? How will Sagittarius be affected by the June 2021 full moon? Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly, angels. How will Sagittarius be affected by the June 2021 full moon? How will Sagittarius be affected by the June 2021 full moon? Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. How will Sagittarius be affected by the June 2021 full moon? How will Sagittarius be affected by the June 2021 full moon? Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Perfect. So at the bottom is our rooted self. The middle is our inner self. No, the left-hand side is our inner self. There we go. The middle is our heart, our emotional self. And the right-hand side is the public arena, the public self. So let's see what the cards have to say. We have the Ace of Wands. We have the Seven of Pentacles. We have the Six of Cups. And we have the Empress. So this is a time that is... And it, it requires patience. And that patience brings us to a place of nostalgia. Now, that nostalgia actually can work in our favor. Usually the nostalgia comes in and is like, hits us over the head. Like, oh, I wish times were different. I wish things were different. But we can actually see this as a nurturing aspect. It's kind of like, well, this is what I want to create. Like, this is what I had. Like, these are the good things that I had. But we also have to be very mindful of the negative things that are coming forward. We are getting a gift just for us at our roots, which is really li lovely. We have the Four of Wands. All right, so that's celebration and success. And we have the emperor. So we have the empress and the emperor. They're not of the same deck. So, <coughs> excuse me, the connection will not be as as great as we as we would like it to be. But this is this is a soulmate connection, a true love connection. There is something here that it can almost feel like we're we're missing it, like at times. But there are going to be moments where things come together in just such beauty and such astonishment that we'll, it'll actually take our breath away. So that's something that is really really nice. The world and the six of swords. My goodness, there we go. 
And then in the public arena, we have the Four of Pentacles, which is vampiric energy, the way that I, I see it, and the devil. So that's Capricorn energy. We become very, very worried and very interested in this full moon in Capricorn. All right. So this full moon is in Capricorn on the 24th of June, and it's going to be intense. It just is for us. There's there's already a conflict that's affecting everyone during this time. And I know what you're thinking, you know, Dean, we don't need more conflict. We, we, we need more harmony. And I agree most definitely. But this is an internal conflict, which, yes, can bleed over into other things. But we have to kind of step back during this moon and look at what it is that we greatly want because the sun is in cancer and the moon is in capricorn and that's what's creating this conflict now the signs that will be most affected by this moon are aries cancer libra and capricorn so if you're born on the cusp of capricorn do be mindful this is going to come out especially in the public arena this moon is going to have a tremendous effect on you if you have these in your charts be mindful of where these fall in your natal charts because this is what's going to be coming up and you're going to be looking at things and being like i don't understand why i'm so worried about xyz and it's because that's where it falls within your natal chart one of these signs falls within your natal chart and it it brings an intensity now, the moon always tells us to surrender to the divine because that's where the power is. It's in the surrendering. It's in the coming together. It's in this greater understanding. And it tells us with the full moon in Capricorn, the end of a tough cycle is approaching. And that's going to be something that's beautiful for us. That's beautiful for anybody to know that the end of the tough cycle, the end of the hurt, the pain, the, the devastation is, is coming to an end. And so many of us have been through tough cycles. Now, either it was through last year, last year it was a tough cycle in a, a very interesting way for everybody. The extent of it is, of course, different for each person, but everybody has been through tough, devastating cycles. And this is showing us that the end of a tough cycle, now it can be the end of the way that we emotionally respond to, to traumas and dramas is coming to an end. It can be that we're stepping into a power we didn't know we had or an assertion of self we, we doubted we could ever step into. But with the full moon in Capricorn, it focuses on the public life, career, and responsibilities. So that's what we're going to be taking super seriously during this time, not to say that we don't always, but this is going to be the main focus. But it comes into conflict with the sun in Cancer, which is all about our private life, our home, and our nourishing, and our nurturing of ourselves and, and those around us. Now, this brings a battle with conditional and unconditional love, but it's very interesting because there's almost a sense of if I can focus my energy on what needs to be done, I can springboard forward into emotionally connecting with what needs to be taken care of. And so this full moon in Capricorn, unlike some of the other sides where signs where it's it's a little bit more difficult, you know, for them to to handle and traverse this moon, it's not going to be as difficult for you, Sagittarius, which is really quite nice. We want to nourish that which is most sacred to us during this time. We really do. But we still want to do this while going after our goals and achieving. And that can be a little bit tricky. You are going to balance this better than, than most, to, to be really honest with you. Now, Cancer calls us to value our roots in our home. And Capricorn calls us to value our duties, our public and personal responsibilities. And Cancer is all about the beginnings and our roots, while Capricorn is all about the goals. But we want the goals during this time, Sagittarius. We are very focused. We are very much embracing the fire and the tenacity that is us and moving forward in that energy. Something has been building up for a long time within us. And this moon is demanding that we let it out. And this is actually going to be something that we rather enjoy, not the birth of it, because births are always painful. It's like when you first create anything, it is, is painful, or if you've ever been through or seen childbirth, it's, it's painful to say the least. So this brings us to a very emotional time, and it brings us to profound revelations. So the end of a tough cycle comes because things are being put in order. Things are being more greatly understood than they were before. And this brings us to a place where we're having new ideas, we're pushing new boundaries, we're, we're opening up the doors. Now on the 10th, and this is of course on the 24th of June, this moon becomes full. On the 10th of July, we have the new moon. And the new moon is in Cancer. So we have Cancer Sun, Cancer New Moon, 
The emotions are tense. It brings us to beginnings and new starts, but it all has to come from the heart. If it doesn't have the heart behind it during this time, we're going to think, what does it matter? We also need to be mindful that we can be more sensitive during this time, and so can everybody else around us because of the power of this moon. We're also going to be very wo worried and very connected to to our own. So to to the people we love, it says you and your family, you and your loved ones are safe. So family, friends, people that we love, people that we nourish, people that we, we are connected to, we need to know that they're safe. We need to know that they're taken care of. We want to have the family together. We want to have things together during this time. It makes us feel good, but also being surrounded by things that we love, being a little bit more of a house bug or a person who is nourishing their loves and their joys and their, and their brilliances, that's going to be what what really moves us forward during that new moon. Now, this is all bringing us to the full moon in Aquarius. And the full moon in Aquarius is on the 23rd of July. And it says, show the world the real you. And why we have to go through the end of a tough cycle approaches, why we have to purge which that which is no longer needed is so that we can show the world the real us, why we have to have the, the battle between our inner self and our external self is because we need to know where we stand. We need to know what we love, what we desire, what we long for, and what we need. Now, the Ace of Wands, as a fire sign energy, oh, goodness, as I stick, skip ahead, let's look at our chakra energy for this time. What is the chakra energy for Sagittarius for June full moon? What is the chakra energy for Sagittarius's June full moon? Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Okay, we have two. We have the I am presence, the crown chakra, and we have universal light, the soul star chakra, located six inches above our crown. So with this, we look at the I am presence, the I am presence, the crown chakra. For me, it's quite literally saying, how are you crowning yourself? I am what? I'm strong. I'm positive. I am, I am tenacious. I am successful. I am weak. I am scared. I am overwhelmed. I am, I am in it up to my eyeballs. I am frustrated. I am angry. Why do we need to say these things? It's important. So often when people just say the good things, we nod. I mean, I, I find it with myself all the time. I'm like, yeah, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. And then you walk away feeling really, really good about yourself. It's like, I got this all figured out. <laughs> and then life starts up again and you're out of that little moment and you realize that you're angry and you're frustrated and things aren't working out the way that you had thought they would. And there's resentments and there's, there's hurts and there's pains. Those need to be addressed if only for us to be able to name them, not to be able to eliminate them completely because, you know, life is hard and we can't always eliminate that which is distasteful to us instantaneously, but so that we can see them for the hurtful sneaks that they are. And then the universal light that comes from a soul star chakra is how we shine. How do we shine within this world? And how do we move forward within that light, within that you know, grace from spirit within that power of soul and self. Now the energy we are to be mindful of during this time, let us see, what is the energy that Sagittarius is to be mindful of during the June 2021 full moon? What is the energy that Sagittarius is to be mindful of during the June 2021 full moon? Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. It's the Hierophant. It's Taurus energy. It is a sense of this is the way it has to be done. This is the way it's always been done. And this is the way it always will be done. It's also being very focused on, on the earning aspect of it. Everything becomes like a business. And this is going to be a time where we want things we can, we are going to be very lured in by this. Okay. This is going to be very attractive to us. All of a sudden there are rules, there are guidelines, there are ways to succeed. There's ways to fail. We're getting it. And, and we like that during this time, we want to have things kind of more clear cut, clear cut than you know, usual. We have to be very mindful of not falling into this trap of not making everything into something that I can just get better and better and better and better and better at. And I lose the joy of it. So just being mindful of this during this time is going to be very empowering and very powerful for us. Now the Ace of Wands is passion. 
It's creativity. It's coming together. It's God's source spirit. However you see the divine, the universe handing you a gift that is just for you, Sagittarius, as a fire sign energy. It also is playing into the Aries energy that the emperor represents. It is being, because Aries is also a fire sign. It is being intense. It is being focused at our root. We have a torch and it's lighting our way. It's guiding us forward. And it then brings us to the seven of pentacles. We have to be patient. What's going to happen is we're going to get this torch and we're going to think, I can light the world on fire in a very good way. You know, I can have this prosperity and this abundance and this brilliance coming forward. I can, I can move the way that I want to. And spirit is going to say, no, you can light this torch within you. It will illuminate the darkness that was within. And now it's time to be patient. Now it's time to, you know, tend the garden, weed out what doesn't need to be there and embrace our souls and ourselves and our desires and our hopes and our dreams and our wishes. Patience is going to be a key at our root. It brings us to the Seven of Cups. The Seven of Cups is nostalgia. Now, why this nostalgia is good is because it's paired with the Empress. But we also always have to be mindful because nostalgia can be bad. It can be, oh, things were better when. It's like, okay, they might have been better for us at certain moments. It might have been easier. But where we are now is what we have to deal with. And if we go to the past and we compare things that will never be again with things that are now, it, it could be devastating. It could be very harsh. It can make this journey so much harder than it needs to be. The Six of Cups comes and what we're going to see is we're going to see things that we really loved. Even if we had a really hard beginning, even if there's a lot about our past that we didn't like, the beautiful things are going to start coming up. And instead of saying, oh wow, I wish I could have that and falling into just the chasing of the memory, we're going to start pulling that forward into our waking world, saying, well, you know what? I really loved this aspect of it. I really loved this beauty of this. I really loved this, you know, <sighs> it's making the world beautiful for ourselves in emotional ways and in physical ways, also in spiritual ways. And that's going to be something that's going to be very powerful for us during this time. Because what we're doing is we're birthing something forward. We're creating, we're cultivating, new ideas are coming. And we're going to see ourselves moving forward towards something powerful during this time. Now, is it going to be different for each and every one of us? Absolutely. Is it going to be something that we have been thinking about for a long time, trying to fit together like puzzle pieces within our own heads? Yes, it is. And we're going to be able to see the beauty, the power, and the intensity that is us. And it leads us to inwardly the four of wands. That's celebration, joy, success, the minor arcana marriage card. Now, the actually, the hierophant is the major arcana marriage card. So it can be with the, with the hierophant in the energy to be mindful of. It can be that we're being told to be mindful of our close relationships, be mindful of the way that we're interacting with them. Sagittarius, it could be a spouse. It could be, you know people that we're just really close to, family, friends, that we have to be mindful of not letting their energy overtake our energy or their goals become our goals. And I know that that sounds maybe counterintuitive because we're going to think, well, shouldn't my goals be the same as my partner's goals? No, you're two separate people coming together to be two separate people, you know, forging our ways forward in this world. So being mindful of this is going to be very important. Now with the four of wands, this is the minor arcana wedding card. This is celebration and joy and happiness and success in the minor arcana, in the minor arcana, in the subconscious part of our minds. Okay. So not the forefront, which is the major arcana, but the subconscious, which kind of can be the, the minor arcana. We're going to be thinking about the long term. We're going to be thinking about the goals that we have and the way that we want to move forward, the people that we want to meet, the adventures that we want to have, the, the, the tests that we want to achieve at. This is going to be a time where the heart and the, and the mind come together and work in, in tandem, in, in synchronicity and in power and focus. But we have to celebrate it. If we don't celebrate the way that we're moving forward, if we don't celebrate what we're creating, we never will. We'll never get there and it will never come forward the way that we want to. Now in our inner self, we have the repeat of the number four because we have Aries come forward. We have, well, Aries, yes, the emperor, which is the fourth card in the major arcana. Now this is telling us that we need to take care of ourselves inwardly. This is telling us that there needs to be this connection, this rest, this peace, this, this coming together of what we desire and where it is that we want to be. The emperor is fierce. The emperor is again, Aries. And Aries is the god of war in Greek mythology. And so this isn't a time that we want to step back and say, oh, we'll just see what happens. This is a time of action. 
And this is a time where we're really going to utilize that Capricorn practicality and, and charge forward with it. It's actually going to be a really good thing with, for us. A lot of, of signs are going to have a struggle with it to how to embrace the heart and, and the mind. Sagittarius, you're not going to have that same sort of struggle. You're going to sit there and say, this is my focus. This is what I want. Emotionally, this is what I need at this time. I'm moving forward towards it. I have my armor on. Why? Because it's smart. Because people can come up and, and take me by eyes, try to knock me down. I'm moving towards my goals. I'm claiming my throne because I'm not having anybody rule over me. I'm claiming what I want, what I need, what I desire, and where it is that I want to be. And inwardly, we're making this decision. All of a sudden, in our emotional state, it starts to open up the world. All of a sudden, we go from, well, can I drive down there? You know, I'm, I'm overwhelmed. I, I'm tired. I'm this, I'm that, to I'm getting in the car. I'm going after this. I'm going to get things done. I'm moving towards what I desire from my life. I'm moving towards where I want to be. And all of a sudden, the world opens in celebration and in success. And that's going to be something that's very liberating after after the past year that we've had, after everything that's been going on, to have our emotions say, I'm ready for the world to open. I'm ready for myself to, to be a part of everything. That's going to be very freeing. And we take our ideas, we take what we desire, and we start moving forward with it. And that's going to be something that emotionally, like a lot of things are going to come up as mentally we're moving forward, but we're going to face them one by one as, as a person does and say, okay, well, that doesn't get to have a say over my life. And okay, that's fair to be upset about that or scared about that, but that doesn't get to stop me. And I'm moving towards what I need in my world, what I desire for myself and how I want to express my being. And this, again, leads us to the sense of victory, to the sense of of power, but this also leads us to being guided by the masculine energy, okay? During this time, the sacred masculine, the sacred feminine is going to be guarding that inner child that needs to be watched over. But it can also be that that sacred feminine needs a rest at times to be able to, to recharge and, and, and refocus. And I'm not exactly sure why that will be, but I do, I do see that as something that, that needs to be, that needs to be addressed during this time. Now with the four of pentacles. Now we have three fours during this time. So spirit is saying to look at your inner self, take care of your home, yourself, your soul, and what you desire. The four of pentacles for me is vampiric energy. It always has been. It always will be. It's like, I have to hold on to this. If I don't, somebody's going to steal it. It's going to fall apart. Nothing is going to be as I wanted it. And this is going to be because we're very used to having things taken from us. We're very used to having the, the floor just cave in from under us and to just fall and it's traumatic it it just is also the vampiric energy are people in our lives that are vampiric who take and take and take they're like leeches they're like mosquitoes okay they take and they they give you nothing but discomfort in return and this is a time where we're done we're done with a lot of people now it can be that we just kind of say okay you know we call up we say we say hi to them and we're as cordial as can be and then we say okay i'm done <laughs> you know this is over and and we hang up and we don't feel feel bad we of course say goodbye and everything like that but it means that we are kind of severing the emotional need that we have that they react in a certain way we're going to see that during this time we're starting to look at our own ideas. We're starting to gather up information. We're starting to say, well, how can I enhance my wealth, enhance my 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 bounty in this world? How can I move forward? What do I move forward towards? Where is it that I want to be? Because the devil's in the details. I mean, quite seriously. And I know that that is going to be a negative, that's supposed to be a negative statement. But here during this time, it's like Capricorn energy is going to be in the details. We're going to be so good at looking at the details during this time that we can actually get caught up in them. So you have to be mindful of that, of kind of boiling everything down to to numbers and facts and, and details and insights. So with the, the devil, there's also a sense that we're breaking chains. We're breaking things that we are bound to that we don't really want to be bound to anymore. We're moving forward in prosperity and success and seeing that this gets to be a part of us. Like this gets to be a way that we embrace our lives, that we go after what we want, that we open up the door. And so there's a sense of excitement here. There, there really is. And I, I'm so happy for you. <laughs> so let's see what the moon has to say. 
How will Sagittarius be affected by the June 2021 full moon? How will Sagittarius be affected by the June 2021 full moon? Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides, angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading. Ooh. Here we go. How will Sagittarius be affected by the June 2021 full moon? How will Sagittarius be affected by the June 2021 full moon? Angels and spirit guides. Okay. Let's see how far this takes us. Fantastic. Yeah, we're just going to have that one be extra because it feels like it should be. So we're going to start with our bonus card, which is the path. At our root, and it's all going to correlate to the path that... Yeah, that we're going to be on at this time. So interesting. We have here abundance. The energy is gaining a momentum. Resilience. Don't let pride get in the way. Oh. Oh, goodness. We have more here than I realized. Fear and wisdom. You're very close to achieving your goals. Purity. Be bold and make the first move. Oh, I like the way this plays. I do. I like the way this all reads together. So we're going to start off with the path. We're looking at our path. All right. And it's this rickety ladder into the sky, which seems unsafe at best and overwhelming. But we're going to see that our path is leading us towards something more. It's like as we ascend and it's scary and it's rickety and we're not sure that we have the proper faith in ourselves and we're not sure that we know what we should know. We're going to see that we're heading towards something greater. And as we ascend, our energy vibration ascends. As we, you know, as we ascend, our, our power within ourselves starts to ascend. What we desire, what we want, what we need, it starts to, to build momentum and starts to guide us forward. And it brings us to abundance at our root. The energy you gain is many, gaining momentum. The abundance is the faith within ourselves, the dream that we have, the way that we're moving things forward, the focus, the insight. The energy is gaining momentum. The energy of abundance is gaining momentum because we're starting to have a greater faith in it than we had before. Resilience. Don't let pride get in the way. So it's very funny. I always think of this as carrying our world tree on our back. And I kind of like the idea of each of us having our own world tree and like how we connect into the world and how that world is built with that tree and, you know, how that lives on after, after we do not. And so the resilience here it's like, are we resilient to not letting pride get in our way? Or is our resilience to keep on carrying that tree, our pride getting in the way and it's saying, stop, look and see, is it time to plant? Is it time to set down the roots of our desires and our hopes and our dreams and our wishes and to say, this is what I want. And this is what I'm going to systematically build towards. Am I going to be just absolutely consumed with the growth of it for some? Yes. Yes, it is. For others, we want that that balance, that work play balance, that work home balance. So it's going to be important to see how we plant these roots, how we go after what we desire, what it is that we want. And it brings us to this place emotionally of fear and of wisdom because wisdom brings fear. Once we figure out, I don't know, all of a sudden that starts to open up the door to knowing. Once we say, oh, there could be more, like maybe I don't have all the answers. That's what makes us wise. But also once we start to name the fears that we have, the hurts, the pains, the disappointments, the angers, the upsets, because our world is opening and we have to be able to see where we're feeling caged, where we're feeling small, where we're feeling overwhelmed. And that brings us wisdom. What is holding us back? What do we want to be set free in? Where do we want the cage never to be again? That makes us wise. And it says here, by addressing our fears and gaining the wisdom from them, you're very close to achieving your goals. You are. You're very close to moving forward in a way that aligns with your intentions, with what you want emotionally, spiritually, excuse me, personally. And we're going to see that brings purity. Purity, be bold and make the first move. Purity doesn't mean that it has, we have to have our souls be as white as the driven snow. No. Without a blemish on them. It means purity and intention. Kind of like tell the truth. Be open and honest with yourself, with what you desire, what you want, what you need, what you hope for, what you fear, where it is that you want to be. 
Be bold and make the first move. Be bold and move forward. It brings us then to our subconscious chakra message, which is visualization, the third eye chakra. All of a sudden, what we spend our attention on starts to grow. Our insights, our understandings, it starts to grow. What we visualize, whether it be us imagining the worst scenarios or the best scenarios, we start to build within our lives. Why? Well, here's the thing. The mind doesn't know the difference between make-believe and reality. It just doesn't, which is beautiful and terrifying at the exact same time. So if we are visualizing, if we are imagining things, or, and just simply using our imagination, this starts to open up our world to us in new ways. Because our mind is saying, well, I already did that. Or, oh, well, maybe I could do that. So as we visualize, our mind and ourselves start to open. Pathways start to open. That if we didn't visualize it, it would seem too overwhelming to walk there. But because our mind doesn't know that just simply by visualizing it, we hadn't walked there. It's setting a pathway for us. It's setting a pathway forward. And that's important. Visualization gets a bad rap. You know, we think, okay, if I just, and, and people have said, like, if you just imagine it, it will come. It, no, it takes a lot of hard work, a lot of dedication, a lot of, you know, trials and errors. But to be able to open that pathway within our mind, to be able to say, I can walk this road, that's an astounding thing. It moves us to our subconscious energy to be mindful of. And that's the King of Cups. It's... Yeah, so you have earth sign energy, you have water sign energy here. So we need to be mindful of the powers and the way this, this moon guides us. And the way that we let the sun's energy take over. Because the heart is going to want to take over loudly and obnoxiously. <laughs> it is. And this can be people who are going to lead through trauma and drama. and want everybody to be around them. And they have, I just, like this booming voice. Almost like, yeah, it's a booming voice. And it's just going to be too much. So we have to be very mindful of this or people who have a way of just like grabbing everybody's attention with their words and their voice. It's kind of like they have this big, powerful bark because you have this dog right behind them, right? Our subconscious rooted self is the 10 of wands. We're done with being buried under endless work, endless hardships, endless pains, endless everything, endless responsibilities. So that all that we can see is the dirt on our feet. We're done with it. We don't want it anymore. We want to take down the load that we carry and make a barn pyre. Call forward wealth and warmth and, and, and people and see what happens. That's what we want. Others have to carry their burdens. They do. They have to kind of step up just a bit. Our subconscious inner self is the world. In our inner self, we want to walk forward in the world. We want to walk forward towards more. We want to explore and we want to see. And it brings us then to our subconscious emotional self. Which is the four of wands. I love it because in the emotional self, we have the world. And in the inner self, we have the four of wands. So they're echoing each other. And the four of wands is celebration, happiness, success, the minor arcana marriage card, being committed to something. It doesn't mean that we have to get married. It means that we are committed to a person, an idea, a, a passion, a project, a, a understanding, a, a dream. We're bringing the beauty into our lives. It's bringing the erotic forward. And that, that's exquisite. It brings us then to our subconscious. Public self. And this is judgment. This is rising out of the box. It's the devil card. It's breaking the chains, right? And we're seeing different details. We're seeing different understandings. We're, we're letting go of the vampiric energy. And all of a sudden, we're hearing the angel's call, the angel's trumpet right here. That's what the plant is called. And we are rising. We are rising to a beautiful new song, a beautiful new tune, a beautiful new world. We have to work hard for it. It's not just going to fall into our laps, but it is going to be exquisite as it develops. Now, our subconscious Luna message is trust and expect powerful change. Trust in yourself. Trust in your connection with divinity. Trust in your, your spiritual understanding. Trust in the people around you that love you and care for you and have proven that time and time again. 
trust and expect powerful change because it is coming. The end of the tough cycle has come and it's time to heal and then show the world who we truly are as we are empowered, as we are emboldened. All right, Sagittarius, I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you. I'm sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. I love you all and stay safe. Let's end this reading with a meditation, a clearing away of negative energy, a raising of our positive energy as we embrace the beauty and the magic of this moon. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. May you move forward in peace and in harmony, Sagittarius, and may you have a blessed moon.